Okay, all right. Today we're gonna to be doing another one of the album ranking videos. This one is going to be Led Zeppelin. I'm Foxy Sellers, and this is my channel dedicated to storytelling. If you're one of those people that fancies fables, tall tales, high adventure, please click subscribe, click like, maybe even comment. You'll get keyed into videos just like this in the future. Okay, so today's ranking is dedicated to the Led Zeppelin albums. There's nine of them. I, I'm, I assume if you're watching this, you're a Led Zeppelin fan too. And if not, you really need to check out Led Zeppelin. I mean, what, where you been? What, what have you been doing? Come on. Okay, so this is gonna be my third album ranking video. I have done Van Halen, I've done ACDC, and the formula for doing so is to take each album and go and rank every single song giving it a, either a one to five stars. Then you take that average, whichever has the best average, that's the best album. And I'll rank those from worst to best. There are cases of tiebreakers. You know, I will include which one had the most fives, which one had the biggest bang for the buck. That usually benefits the albums that have more songs on it, but I have yet to need that as a tiebreaker. So in Led Zeppelin, we're not gonna have any problems with this. They, they fall into place pretty easily. Led Zeppelin has very different sounding albums as they evolved over time. So let's, just, let, let's jump right into the lowest ranking one, which is their second to last album that they produced when they were all alive. It's their third to last uh, studio album. And that's Presence. And Presence was, you know, I hate to do this, the worst album first. You know, we'd like, I'd love to start these videos off with something a lot more positive, but this album's not that bad. I mean, it's got, it, their, the first track on it's, it is, is ranked a five. That that's a great song. It's the only five on there. It was kind of a tough time for, you know, the band members of Led Zeppelin. Jimmy Page was, <laughs> he was in rough shape at the time. Bono was full-fledged, you know, drinking at the time. And then I, I, I can't remember if Robert Plant, I mean, Robert Plant was in a really bad car accident. He was, he was in a wheelchair for, I think, either the recording of the album or the tour. And I can't remember if not his, his son had died yet. But so multiple band members were going through very difficult times. So this, understandably, the worst album. Presence had an average score of 2.33. It did, it did have one five on it, but the rest, it, like some of it's unlistenable. It, it really isn't. It, it had a bang for your buck in 19. So number eight is Coda. Coda had an average score of 2.75. It has no fives on it. It had a bang for your buck of 22. Hey, Coda doesn't really count. Well, it, it does since it's all new tracks and all new recordings and, and that, you know, the, it's, released and charted as such like so it counts uh and yeah sure i mean if bonham had lived we would have never seen this album but um this was released as a studio album and has unreleased tracks from i think almost all their albums not all of them but you know i think led zeppelin 2 to in through the outdoor um, that takes away from any unique sound that it would have had. It's it's basically just a hodgepodge of whatever. There's no fives and there's a lot of twos. There was a re-release of this in 2015. And that version had Hey, Hey, What Can You Do? And it also had Traveling Riverside Blues. Had those been on the album and like, I don't know why those songs never got released until much, much, much later, but they were there's unbelievable songs of theirs. And they included it in that 2015 re-release of Coda, but it, it wasn't on it when it was released. So I can't include those. So um, it, it, it just doesn't have anything wor worthwhile. I mean, even if you're like, oh, I love Led Zeppelin, like you don't even need to buy this album. Number seven is In Through the Outdoor. It had a... Average song score of 3.57. Now we're kind of getting a boost here. Uh, it had two fives on it and it had a bang for your buck of 25. This 1979 album is really their last real studio album. They were, they were struggling at this point. I mean, just in their personal lives between Jimmy's drug addiction, John's drinking, and then like the less cohesive relationship that had kind of developed with John Paul Jones and the band and plant 
was in some darker moments. It, it's, um, but it, you know, it still had two fives on it. So you got to give it some credit. I mean, it did, and it did have one, it had a specific sound. So it was, it was part of the evolution of Led Zeppelin at that point. They were trying some very new, sophisticated sounds. Um, and it's okay. It, you know, it's an, it's an okay album, but you know, it falls kind of to the bottom. Number six, Physical Graffiti. This has an average song score of 3.71. Now, it has five fives on it and it has a bang for your buck of 52. However, it falls lower on the list here, and that's because it's a double album. So it's, it's got some fluff in there that brought down the average score, but just the fact that it's got five fives on it. I mean, this isn't, I mean, it's probably misplaced a, a bit, uh, unfairly. Everything from here on down is, these are all awesome, awesome albums. You got Cashmere, which is probably one of their most influential songs for bands you know, going into the 80s. You got Cashmere, you got Custard Pie, which is an iconic sound of theirs. And it influenced so much of future sounds to come. Then you got 10 Years Gone, you got In the Light, you know, like, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I love listening to those songs and they you know, like they, they're a time capsule. They just they they sound so unique from anything else that anyone ever produced. Number five is Houses of the Holy. Houses of the Holy has an average song score of three point eight six. It has three fives on it and it has a total bang for your buck of thirty two. Houses of the Holy came out in 1973. This is one that had all. All the hits from that, that that theatrical concert film, Song Remains the Same. So a lot of what's on here, I, I just, I grew up loving. Um, I must have watched Song Remains the Same probably like a hundred times. It's got, you know, it's got the title track, Song Remains the Same. It's the rain song, Over the Hills and Far Away. Those are just huge, like absolutely huge. And then you've got No Quarter. No Quarter is one of my favorite songs, but if you listen to the concert version of that from The Song Remains the Same, that is possibly my favorite recording of Led Zeppelin's altogether. Like just that specific sound that they had in concert for No Quarter. It's just, it, it's untouchable. Like no one else can, can reproduce it in any way. Um, and then, you know, they're coming off of for House of the Holy here, they're coming off of Led Zeppelin IV, which, you know, the popularity of that was so immense. It was, you know, such a crazy, crazy album for them to produce. And then do House of the Holy, which had a very, very different sound. Um, and then be as successful as Houses of the Holy. It's, it's, quite, it's quite impressive. Number four is Led Zeppelin II. Led Zeppelin II has an average song score of 3.88. Just barely beating House of the Holy. It also has three fives on it, and it had a bang for your buck of thirty-five. Uh, this is this is their follow-up to their nineteen sixty-eight album, came out in nineteen sixty-nine. Uh, from their you know follow-up to their debut album, that is, and and it, it really was a great extension of Led Zeppelin one. It had a it had a similar sound. But it was a little more hard rocky with that blues sound to it. And then you got like um, Ramble On. That That's probably in their top three greatest songs ever. Maybe even the top two. It's just, it's, it's, an, it's a fantastic song. Mine's a tale that can be told. My freedom I hold dear. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the ones where uh, Robert Plant had had a lot of influence from J.R.R. Tolkien and, 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 you know, Lord of the Rings themed, uh, um, concepts. So Ramble On, I believe is, 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 uh, crafted after the story of the Hobbit. So. In the darkness, Number three appropriately is Led Zeppelin three. 
Led Zeppelin three had an average song score of 3.90. And keep in mind, I mean, this is 0.02 more than Zeppelin two and 0.04 more than Houses of the Holy. So these are all like just throw them all up in the air and see where they land. Zeppelin three, however, did have five fives. Had a bang for your buck of 34. I would have guessed two would have beat this one out, but the math says otherwise. So th- there are five fives on this. Uh, Since I've been loving you, that's the way Gallows pull, and and then the anthem sound from the immigrant song. It's it's seriously like it's it's got a lot of monster tracks on it. I'm I'm I may have ever overlooked this. I mean, I always did like Led Zeppelin three growing up as a kid. It had its moments off off and on, but I wouldn't have guessed that it it charted number three on here. Um, it wasn't as commercially successful as one and two at the time. And that's because it had these overly acoustic songs on the album. And I think probably half of the album is acoustic guitar. With, you know, either some electric guitar mixed in or um, or none at all. So uh, it, it just didn't pop the way the first two albums did success wise. Hey, it stood the test of time. It's, it's fucking awesome. Number two is their debut album, Led Zeppelin. This one had an average score of 4.33. It had four fives on it and it had a bang for your buck of 39. It, I mean, it holds up. It's, it's, it, you know, you could introduce someone to Led Zeppelin through this album because it's their sound that everyone knows and loves. It's got four fives on it. All fours except one three, nothing lower. So it's super solid all the way through. This is the sound of theirs that I love best, even though they kind of evolved into something much more like nuanced and, and, and sophisticated musicians as they became. This, this was like a raw blues sound that just killed for me. So I, I get it. I get to see, I see why it's number two for, for me. And then the number one Led Zeppelin album. This one is probably projected by everyone to be number one on the list. And that's Led Zeppelin 4. Led Zeppelin 4 had an average song score of 4.88. That's out of a total of five. That's ridiculous. It had seven fives on it. A total bang for your buck of 34. All that becomes kind of irrelevant because, you know, these are all very different in the number of tracks that they have. So possibly one of the most important rock and roll albums ever produced. Literally all of them are fives except one four. Four sticks appropriately uh, is still a, a really great song, but I had to, I had to mark it as a four. That's just where it fell for me. Um, the rest are just rock and roll God status songs. Th- think about this. You got, Black Dog and Rock and Roll, which are the first two songs on the album. And just think about like how down to earth, influentially sounding hard rock songs they are. Just that's the first two tracks right out of the gate. Boom. And then you got, you know, you got Stairway to Heaven, you got Misty Mountain, Hop, you got uh, Battle of Evermore. I mean, all of those have like these stellar, unique sounds that that didn't really like People could somehow, even though they're unique, they, they could relate to those songs for whatever reason. Um, and then going to California, I mean, I, I, I really, really love that song. It's, it's a song I, you just, I, I could play it on a loop. Uh, when the levee breaks, uh, you know, find me a better harmonica song. I, I, I don't think there is. It's, it's, it's. hard it's bluesy it's got the rhythm it's got the sexiness in 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 the way plant sings it it's it's got everything i mean it's just i mean i'm you know i'm focusing on that song but like the rest of them like they're all just unbelievable so you can see why led zeppelin four tracked number one on here and that my friends is my led zeppelin albums ranked from worst to best 
I'm not surprised at number one, Led Zeppelin IV is probably one of the most iconic albums of, of any, any band, I, anywhere. I mean, I mean, it's, it, was, it was just all fives and, you know, it, it's just such a great album. You, you, can't, you can't beat it. So there you have it. I'm Foxy Sellers. Go ahead, click the like, click the subscribe, comment even. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure some of you have differenting opinions on what your favorite was or your worst or your middling. I, I don't know. But go ahead, tell me what you think. Thanks.